All right, this is a video to help Tom with uh, constructing one of these 6030 ovens. I'm trying to keep this thing out of the sun. So this is my, it's now into its fifth year, I guess, technically. And I just wanted to show him some basics on the hinges. Uh, I'm going to show you this neat thing here first is uh, the hinge pins. These are the ones that you uh, put into the hinge pieces, such as here. And the, uh, I'll show you that a little later. Anyway. This is one of those uh, rare earth magnets. Get these. This one here I actually got from a company that sells uh, equipment to build your own wind turbines. And very, very powerful magnet. Very almost impossible to get off metal once you put them on. Anyway, it looks like that. And definitely keep your fingers out of the way when these things are snapping into place. Anyway, because I kept losing these hinge pins. So this seemed to be the best idea. They just sit there and they never fall off. So. Anyway, uh, he was asking about, okay, the door. So all the hinge bits. So let's do those first. So there's no real hinges on the door. These are what's called a sash latch. Made for windows. So you put the, uh, this would be on top of the window. Um, and this would go on the other piece of the window. So when the, the old sash window used to slide down, they would lock together. So it's on the side. So you just do that. And similarly over here. You notice this has got a bit of rust on it. That's from the steam escaping out of here because it sits in this position most of the time when it's up the other way, right? That's the top. So uh, anyway, so you can see the there's the tin foil kind of getting very dilapidated now. Uh, the cardboard's underneath. So yeah, the tin foil just basically covers the cardboard, and the cardboard itself is glued to the bottom of the box and the front of the box and the back of the box and the side of the box over there and then the tape kind of seals up the edges here as you can see it's not very good this actually should be redone but that's after you know almost well like I said it's over four years continuous use it's actually stood up not too badly anyway the inside of the door basically looks like this and what I did was same thing coated the you can see the cardboard kind of sneaking through right now it's in the sun there that's a better view of it not the part of my camera camera work here. Anyway, you can see it there. That's a bare spot where the, the tin foil actually that's the reflectix tape that is peeled back. Anyway, you glue the uh, corrugated cardboard layers to the door, and then you kind of just put the tin foil on it, as you can see, and then you put the tape around just to kind of seal up the edge as best you can all the way around. It just kind of helps, and that whole thing would just sit back in here. So there are no hinges on the door. So I'll put the door back on. Just to, ah, okay, don't do that. Oh, that's a piece of mechanical, by the way. It just The reason it's there is that way I can slot the top of the door in first. Of course, trying to do this one hand, it doesn't work well. There we go. And that holds it so it doesn't fall inside. And it latches like that. Now, the folding reflector. So, the reason I did these hinges the way I did them. I'll show you why. And here's something that you should never do. Notice my, you can see it, my glass is cracked. There's a, a split all the way down here. And a second one that comes up here. And at this point right here, when I was pulling the back reflector off, uh, it slipped and the piece of metal came down and hit it right there. But, because it's double layer glass, the one on the inside of course was not affected. And this split hasn't seemed to affect its cooking abilities. So, it will stand up. Anyway, back to the hinges. Okay, the smaller hinges, which are on this side, on the, the big side reflector, obviously screw to the box, and they're very close. So I'll get your side view. So you can see they're, they're tightly tucked in, and these are the solid pin hinges because the hinge pins don't come out. So this is able to obviously do this. Okay, and similar set on the reflectors. Um, one on this side, one on this side. So these kind of fold up against themselves like that. And then this whole business, because it's so close to the to the box, will fold down right on top of it. Now the other side, same thing, more hinges here and up here, where the other little flap is. There it is. And the reason that they are the way they are is, I'll show you the gate hinges here. Now, and the reason they're so big is because I needed to have them extended up. So if you look, there's quite a gap here. And the reason for that is because that leaves you the space 
for that one to fold down first. And when these are folded down on top of it, then these two, or this one, pardon me, will then fold down flat and it's basically, and there you are, you're ready to carry it. The only two pieces you're left with are, of course, the front and rear, which is, this is the front. And this is where the angle brackets come in. There's one there, one there, and if you'll note, I cut slots in the last screw holes. And the reason for that is, when you go to put it on, just bear with me, open this back up. And when you're putting the front and rear reflectors, you can just slide them onto the bolts, just like that. Again, working one-handed. Hope you saw that, so just slide right into place. Same with the back one. And again, slotted holes, there it over, as you can see, bolted through, slotted holes on the bottom, and again, bear with me here, and again they'll just slot right onto the thumb screws on the back, and then you can tighten them up, just like that, right, hold it down. Then these hinges here, which were the, basically the same as these hinges, which were on the side pieces, come up. And they just slot together. So now with the hinge pin out, you see it's a two piece, so now it just joins back together. You slide the pin down inside here, do the same with the front, that side, and voila, you have it. And that's pretty much it. And I'm sure that the next thing will come up is the T nuts. Well, the T nuts are actually back in here. So we'll take this reflector off, it's the back one. So the T nut actually mounts from the inside of the cabinet before you put the cardboard in. So you drill the hole through and it hammers through this way and then this critter here. So you don't have to take them right out. As you can see they do get kind of rusty. Uh, we'll just thread into that T-nut from this side and that allows you to tighten up and hold on your reflectors. So anyway, that's what I've got for now. So hopefully that'll help Tom out and anybody else that's trying to build one of these. Okay, stay tuned. There'll be more videos to follow.